You're watching the North Carolina Player Show on Fan Media Network. I want to welcome back 1993 national champion for the University of North Carolina and longtime NBA player, George Lynch. George, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been rough. This is a rough start for our Tar Heels. Um, two ACC road losses, um, performances. You know, I don't know where uh, Coach Williams is going to start with this group. Uh, he shook up the lineup, uh, maybe to try and motivate some guys defensively. Uh, but I, I think our guard play, we need a little bit more experience at our guard play. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about <clears throat> the change lineup. He started Sharp, Baycott, Walton, R.J. Davis, and Playtech, and took off the starting lineup, Brooks, Love, and Black. <clears throat> I heard Coach Williams on the radio um, say that the reason he did that was the defensive grading. And you know how important that was to Coach Smith. After every game, the coaching staff, and I did this at Kansas with Roy Williams. I did it when I was a head coach. We would take about three hours to grade the film and then put the players' grades in order and then uh, present them to the team. And they'd be awarded, uh, you know, first, second, and third. Uh, so Coach Williams basically said that those were the best five defensive players from the previous game. That's the impression I got. And that's why they started. Um, did you experience that? Did Coach Smith ever do that to you and your team saying, you know what, I'm really disappointed in the way we're playing. I'm just going to play the best five defensive grades in the next game. No, I don't think he took that drastic uh, approach as far as, you know, pulling starters out of the lineup, but he did address it, uh, went over it. You know, plus minus guys had to run for it, but um, not in my four years that he pulled guys out of the lineup. He usually did that during the game where he would put the blue team in, and and when you when when you served in for the blue team, you know you were messing up at some point. Yeah. Now, George, explain to the viewers what was the blue team in North Carolina. So the blue team was the, the rotation of guys that wasn't starting. It could have been. The third rotation of guys, uh, it could be walk-ons, guys who, you know, come to practice and work hard every day, uh, you know, not awarded with playing time, but, you know, are awarded being a part of the team. And every once in a while, when when the starting unit isn't playing uh, to his liking, he will put the blue team in and tell us, go watch, watch how these guys work together and play together as a unit. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst thing that would happen as a starter was the blue team would go in and increase the lead and play well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what Coach Smith wanted. He wanted that motivation. Yes. Um, he, he, he wanted to motivate the players. And uh, that blue team started, I'm sure, back in the 70s. And in a way, it was kind of taking a group, one, it would reward them for their effort and practice that they knew they were going to get in the game. And it was almost a pitcher throwing a change-up pitch to bring new energy to the court and wear out the opponent and give the starters a break. And uh, he's always had the blue team, and he did the same thing for us, uh, that they would sometimes go in for a, a minute or two-minute spurt to um, change the tempo of the game. So, uh, yeah, so... This lineup of Sharp, Baycott, Walton, R.J. Davis, and Playtech, um, what what do you think the impact of that starting lineup had uh, when you started, when you watched the game last night? Well, when I watched it, um, you know, they it, it, it just, just wasn't enough offensive power um, from the perimeter. And I think that's the challenge that Coach Williams is struggling with. Which three guys can I play with the traditional bigs trying to add, utilize the high-low uh, post-up. Uh, the problem is, I think part of the problem is we uh, we can't feed the post well enough and stretch the defense to um, to make the make the offense, make the defense play us honestly to give, give Brooks and Baycop and the bigs that we have room to operate. George, the, the, the reality the reality is 
we are a bad shooting team. We are a bad passing team. Um, and uh, our ACC stats, all right, there are 15 teams in the ACC. And these are stats from all the games for all the teams. We're last place in three point field goals made at just over four. We're 14th place in three point field goal percentage at 27, just under 28. We are 14th in assist to turnover ratio at 0.8, meaning, you know, for every, you know, point, for every assist, we get a turnover. For every 0.8 assists, so that, that's not, the good teams have like two to one. We are in 14th place in our turnover margin at um, negative 2.3. We're 12th place in field goal percentage. And that's a stat that Carolina has always been, not only tops in the ACC, but tops in the country because yes. of the transition baskets, uh, the big play, big players inside getting close to the basket, and then the offensive rebound. To be 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 12th in field goal percentage is is as shocking as it is the turnovers. You can deal with turnovers sometimes because of pace of play, but yeah. lack of field goal percentage that that's terrible. And we're at 13th in three point field goal percentage defense, giving up almost 36 percent from the three point line. That's something you and I have talked about in the past. I think that we have a tendency to over help on penetration and then it's a long recovery back to your your man and almost we've got to let that player drive to the basket against our size and rather give up a tough two than a rhythm three any thoughts on the stats uh ha let me ask you this those things are really serious issues how do you fix them we can't make any trades you know, in the NBA, when you were at the Lakers <laughs> and the Sixers, you could make a trade during the year. But yeah, this they, is they, your they, roster. Hey, I got traded for Shaq. That was a that was an upgrade. I I'll make that trade if I was a GM trading myself. <laughs> but um for our team, I mean I mean it's almost, you know, you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. You know, it's one of those situations where if if you know coach looked to put offense in the game, then they're not taking care of the ball. They're not, uh, they're young, you know, experienced play in the ACC, especially at the guards position is key. Uh, we got our bigs, for, but we can't get them the ball. Uh, so honestly, I don't, I don't know where coach starts with on this one. Uh, you know, I guess you try to play everybody, get them experience, you know, hopefully by the second half of the season and, uh, you know, make a late run in the conference play. But, uh, you know, two tough road games at NC State, at Georgia Tech, uh, turning the ball over, and that's with no crowd. Um, you know, you know, young guys with experience, you just hope they come around with it, come around, yeah. and, you know. Well, I, I think the critical thing, a couple of things that I, I look at as a coach. First of all, Kerwin Walton playing well. He had nine points on four uh three or four from the three-point line, had four assists and only one turnover. Like, those are good numbers. And as long as he's giving you defensive effort, I think he needs to play more. He played 22 minutes. Right. He's a threat. He can stretch the floor. And when he shoots it, man, he shoots, you know, some of those guys are just shoes. Like, you had Donald Williams. And, you know, they just, like, automatic. You know, the stroke never changes. Every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. That's a real threat because... He'll stretch the defense. I think that uh, we need point guard play, and we do not have a point guard on the roster. It drives me crazy when R.J. Davis and Love have a semi-break, and they put their head down, and they try to attack the basket with a Euro step or force a shot. Uh, I miss the days of the Pat foul line pull-up jumper or dribble it out and trust secondary break. Um, right. But they they just forced some gosh awful shots. Yeah, um, RJ went in there a couple of times and had charges drawn on him. Uh, 
but you know, like you said, if you don't have a point guard on your on the roster that you could put in, and and they do it well and correctly, and uh, and and then you can sit them and let them watch how a real point guard does it. Uh, that was the you know that was one of the things you know when when I was at Carolina you had King Rice then you had Derek Phelps backing King Rice up you know Derek was one of those type of guards wasn't going to make too many mistakes he was great defensively he was going to run your system and I don't think we have two point guards well I know we don't have two point guards we don't have one. not even one <laughs> maybe the best point guard on our team is Kenny Smith's son KJ true. where he's kind of a true point guard mentality. Uh, in terms of setting the team up um, and d- had some good moments last year. But uh, yeah, we, we so it's got to be point guard by committee. And so, you know, if I'm the coach, maybe I dummy down the offense a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Talked about thinking, you know, there's a lot to think about transition. Am I going to transition? Am I, you know, are we going to the secondary break, the sets? You know, maybe you just flow into a motion offense. And, and it doesn't matter who brings up the ball. So it's point guard by committee. And you have to do a lot of individual film work. The good thing about this pandemic and the, the Christmas break, you're not limited in terms of practice time. You can watch a lot of film with these guys. So I, I would have my assistants broken up into point guards, wings, and, and post players and mm-hmm. have uh, my assistants assigned to those groups and pull them in and watch a lot of tape because as, as coach Williams would say, the eye in the sky don't lie. And I think you got to make them better. You, the player development is critical. Uh, ball handling drills, passing drills. I used to do passing drills like uh, four against three in a circle, um, you know, five, the whole team pat. We don't pass the ball. Well, we can't see. I talk about see and deliver. Can you see an opening? your man and can you deliver the ball like some guys could see but they can't deliver the ball because there's a a defender between me and you so i have to create an angle either over the top or side or fake the defender look them off to get the ball to you we're not good at that or some guys can't see and they still try to deliver and that's worse uh so um i would put them i'd almost say you know what we're gonna practice motion offense and you know you're gonna at the end of this segment if we have an assist to error ratio of below two to one the offense is going to run um and and really emphasize ball movement player movement and getting guys open shots um i I think we've got to and help those point guards and in, in full court one-on-one, bringing the ball up, protecting the ball, um, transition, defensive transition drills. Coach would do the defensive recognition drill. You know, we'd, we'd throw the ball up and then a coach on the side would send out one, two, three, four, or five players. Yes. So yes. The, the, the guard would immediately say, okay, we've got three or less back. We're attacking. To host a player show or appear as a player on a player show, simply create a profile on Fan Media's iOS app or website. Select your teams and make a short intro video on your phone. Show hosts, reporters, former players, and superfans can use our Get Verified feature and make an intro video as well, and our mobile newsroom staff will reach out.